The Rancor's Brothel presents The Curse of Strahd. <laughs> and as you step into the room, you get a what? very familiar smell, a smell that you can taste, and you realize that the room sort of uh, very prominently tastes like death. You can taste death. It's, it's close. Okay. And it's recent. Okay. <laughs> um, and she's she's just distraught sitting there just looking. I mean, she's not distraught anymore, but she just keeps reading the letters over and over. And you see her particularly, this one sort of falls, and she just keeps holding this one. All right, I'm going to, I'll motion at them to come in, but I'm, I'm moving to her. Is it okay if the rest of us come in? You know, she doesn't say anything. Yeah. Does she look curious? She she minds that we come in. At this point, she's just she's totally absorbed in reading this letter over and over. Okay. I mean, she's it. She, it's to the point of she's caressing the the handwriting. Um, I want to look out like okay to the street. Yeah, I'm actually not going to go in because I'm bleeding, so I'm gonna stay outside. Just a flash okay. Blood is blood. She's a vampire. Uh, you can make a perception check if you want. Uh, it's a good one. Three. You don't notice that anything. Uh. You don't notice anything. Nobody seems to have cared that there was just a small, you know, magic battle at the, you know, the mayor's house. Uh, so, uh, Bozak, are you coming in? Yeah, sure. Uh, perception check. Nat 20. That's three in a row. Yep. Something is wasted wrong. them all now. You, as you walk in, you know, this, you can control that, you know. that, that rank taste of death hits you, and you immediately realize, and you sort of glance off to your left, so you see brass rocks approaching the young auburn-haired woman and you your attention is immediately drawn into the side room and you sort of glance and look around the corner and you see that there is on top of what is probably what probably at one point was the dining room table you see what appears to be a six foot long box miss miss i i don't mean to be insensitive but is that is that the bird master in there you you guys aren't from around here are you you could say that. No, well, I already did say that to you. That's what perso- <laughs> persuaded you to let us in. You should go back. Girl has no home. Girl has no name. Girl has Didn't nothing. we try and go back? No. We did. The gates shut behind us. Well, the wolves herded yeah. us in here like sheep. You shouldn't be here. I don't. Where Where did... And she looks... Did you pick up the letter? That yes, I did. Floor? Where did... She's pointing... Where did... Where, where did that letter come from? That's this, not. This is the one that was delivered to us in a tavern, and we came to help. We found that one on the road here. But that's that. That's not his. I yeah, and I will show her the other letter. It looks very similar to this one. And looking at both of them, you see her compare them, and she just she, her hand immediately goes to my mouth. She's like, "Oh my god, you." You poor bastards. I, I'm going to need some explanation. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, we need... We should talk to Ismark. Who is Ismark? Is, Ismark is my brother. And who are you? I'm... I'm Irina. That's me soon. Yeah. Did he bite you? You, know, you notice as you as you say that, you see her sort of instinctively, like, check to make sure that everything was still in place, and she's like, yes, you, I just, I don't understand, why would, why would that bastard lead you here? We were kind of wondering that ourselves. He, you should he run. said we you heard not a voice in the woods when we fell in battle to some dire wolves that... We were pitiful playthings. Nobody plays with Pether. Mm-hmm. That scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> you got me back. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, do you have an inspiration, shit, Troy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Please take an inspiration. I like the idea that nobody plays with Pither. 
No, that was the last time. I <laughs> no, because you still said Stephen A. Ah, uh, well, too bad. <laughs> you already start. You already started full. You already started full hit points. Just no reminder. Yeah, that I'll take counts. It. I'll take that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I like that. I like that phrase. I'm bleeding out here. <laughs> you you have you three lost hit. three fucking hit points. You hit close. me in the face. My beautiful, beautiful face. You're lucky. I missed your demon neck. You had a demon neck. Ooh. Now she cries. You made her cry. Do you feel better? No, the kids? spell's still going. <laughs> It hit you I, too, I, I dick. I give him a little shove and like, just give him a look like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, I'm afraid that at some point we're going to kill Luke's character. <laughs> as a group. Luke's character is going to kill you when you sleep. Um, so she, she, can, you see she folds this letter up and again, she sort of holds it and stares into the other room, which at this point, if you follow her gaze, you also see the obvious coffin on top of the dining room table in the other room. No, we should... We should talk to Ismark. You, you. Where is where is Ismark? He's he's at the Blood of the Vine. Oh, that okay. Because that was on the roadmap. Where's that? And what is it? It's it's the tavern. It's literally the only thing where people are in town. The only place we can okay. get. Um, who's in the box? It's in the box. <laughs> Who's that like, coming? That would that's that's my father. He died three days ago. Oh I'm sorry. my god! Did you if you started digging? Would you shut up? No. No one no one will carry him to the cemetery. Where's the cemetery? You no, you passed it. It's on the other side of town. Oh. Why will no one carry him? Because it's like really far. <laughs> Probably because of the March of the Dead, the priest. I don't know. It's it's I would have thought I mean Kolyan was the closest thing that this place has had for a leader in a long time. You'd have thought that they would have Come out for him, and this is some sort of ritual when people die here. March of the Dead. I don't, I don't know what you mean. No, that's no, that's no, that's it's March of the Dead is it's something that happens around here. He, I can't, I forget you aren't from around here. It's. Would you like me to carry him to the cemetery? That will do so, man. I mean, I we uh, you know it's we we couldn't leave the house. We've been. Attacked every night up until he died. He, he couldn't. He couldn't stand the howling and the screaming and the <coughs> scraping. He, he, he his heart just gave out. Okay, go three back, days ago. Go back to this walk of the dead thing. What exactly is it? He won't let their spirits rest. Who's he? He's screaming from outside. <laughs> <laughs> is it the <coughs> the count? It's, it's it's to remind us what happens when we stand against him. One dead soul, two <laughs> dead souls, <laughs> three dead souls. Ah, ah, ah. I, it's it's horrific. You stroke a midnight, be at the cemetery. You'll see. I'd rather not. So, do you want us to bury him or, or not? I uh, no. I that would yeah. That would be, that would be lovely. I apologize for everything. It's just <laughs> the last. Six weeks of anyone approaching the door has been either coming to drink my blood or to attempt to take me away. You got a uh, band aid? <laughs> what did you say? You said you got a band aid? <laughs> you can who's have try- inspiration. Who's because... trying to carry you oh, away? Sweet. The count. You get nothing for a Muppet impression? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> why? I don't, I don't know. He, he wants me. I can't tell you why. He And around here, whatever Strahd wants, the devil Strahd gets. I'll show him a devil. Um, she laughs a lot. Because <laughs> I am one. <laughs> you have. You... <laughs> oh, you're Do I get another you're, inspiration you're, making her laugh. Your you're, mom was a devil, not you. <laughs> I am writing down Arena as one of my friends. <laughs> you, you have, <coughs> you have no, no. <laughs> you're being an ass to my character the whole time. I made Arena laugh. You no, that's why Irene's my friend. She thinks you're a dick too. <laughs> <laughs> you are either you are either much stronger than you look, or you are an incredible fool. Both. I vote the second. Would you like? Like, do you want to get out of here? Better to be a fool than a dead fool. Is Ismark has been saying he he thinks that if we go to Valaki that I'll be safe. I, What's that? It's it's farther down the road. It's maybe half a day's walk. Is there anything deadly between here and there? Star Wars. She just 
stares at you. <laughs> well played. Is it? So, let's go speak to the guy, I guess. Then. Okay. Um. By the way, it's getting to be on evening. You guys haven't had a meal in a while, so you are getting a little hungry. Meat pie still smells delicious. Yeah. Uh, hey, Irina, what can you tell me about the pie lady and the pies? I, 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 I wouldn't eat that if I were you. I was wondering. It, though, I can hardly blame people. It makes it all go away. What? It's a drug. She's a drug dealer. Everything. It just. It all just fades away. Uh, suicide pies. That they, uh, they make. They make you happy. Heroin pies. Mm. Um, and around here, you guys that's seem to be short needed. supply. Of apparently, she just nods. Makes sense. All right. How about you, you say to the woman who's been bitten by a vampire several times in the last few weeks? Can she walk <coughs> outside without getting burned? If the sun's up, I mean, it's heavily overcast, so I don't think that's why I'm asking. Has she turned? Is there any evidence that she's turned? I mean, what's just is there like a history that we can do? Like, do we know that vampires are made from? I would take a history, or... an arcana, or a nature. Just pick which one you're gonna roll. A religion. I would take a religion a too. Cult. Not that good. I'm a plus one on eleven. Those. Eleven on religion. Eleven religion. 16. I'm dumbfounded. Okay, and a sixteen on history. Um, you would know obviously that there's there's a period of time, and chances are that that they get weaker. You would assume that a lady who threw a crack about seven inches wide nearly took his head off, and who was screaming at you and was holding the broadsword. She seems to be. She's emotionally a wreck. But she's not weak. I mean, she's still fighting things quite strongly. So you would imagine that from history, you're sort of treating it like a disease. She's in the very early, early stages of the disease, even if he's fed off of her several times. Um, so no, she's not going to burst into flames. Eleven on religion, you would know the normal things. You know, running water, um, well, thresholds. You say normal, holy symbols? But holy symbols would definitely would definitely cause an effect. You're so, in Harry Potter and I already did. I walked in and held out my holy symbol to her. Oh. She didn't react. Nice. I was wondering what the fuck you were doing. I I've got a holy symbol tattooed on I my head. Yeah. Do. That's awesome. What you saying it's getting dark? It, it, I'm just saying it's getting on. It's getting evening. You guys haven't had anything to eat. It feels like you haven't eaten in like a day. I mean you did eat, but did you? <coughs> or is it the same day? Um, it might actually be the same day. It doesn't seem like it to us, though. <sighs> oh, I, I bet it's been days. Time to lie, man. <laughs> Fun like that. No, uh, it, I mean, I would if you gentlemen would offer to to take my father. I I think we should get Ismark. Ismark should be there. But yeah, that that would that would be great. No one's. Do you have a cart or anything that we can put him in? I'm going to carry him. Right? Well, I mean, just out, out back. He can carry him pretty easily. I mean, yeah. Yeah. how about we go over to the to the tavern, tavern and first. we call out the people who should be taking him and make them do it? Is that okay with you? Or, or we or? shame them into doing it. Shame. Um, yeah. Um, I, I'm not for shame. I will pick this coffin up and carry myself. <laughs> I I do think my brother should, should be there. You definitely look like you can carry it on your own, but uh, I... Oh, he's I, welcome. This. <laughs> well, like, I'm just saying that Colossus you're... will have this funeral whether you show up. <laughs> it, must, it must be done. It's do we, do we, we, carry the coffin, <laughs> we carry the coffin to the tavern and then ask, or do we go to the tavern first? And I'm ask. carrying this to the tavern. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I'll right. help. I'm just taking my body for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, oh, my Marina, God. just real quick, you got any bread or anything we can grab? Uh, there's some food in the. Back, yeah. Okay, just we haven't eaten a little bit. Like food that's edible to humans. Okay. You see her sort of just look at you like, "Wait a minute, dick!" I yell from outside. <laughs> she just we just came like, across a lot of rotten food, so she just sort of looks at you like you're insane. I'm and then she kind of looks, and then she kind of looks at the meat pie, pie that's kind of congealing that uh, uh -huh. he had, and it's like, "Yes, I the the bread is safe. It's okay. it's a bit old, it's a bit hard, but yeah, it's safe." Okay, I grab some of the bread so we can all eat and not waste a ration. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. We're walking. That's fine. Um, Are you coming with us? Uh, yes. Let Put, that we can go. You you've been kind of nervous about people out here. You want my travel cloak? No, just 
You see her sort of stains on it. She sort of had now that she's had a moment and she's <coughs> you know gotten past it and realized that you guys aren't it. You see, she kind of stiffens up a little bit. She sort of got that you know puts on the brave face, stiff upper lip. You see her strap the long sword to her and she kind of you know sort of straightens her shoulders. She's like, okay, let's go. I'll pick up the coffin and carry like a boom box. Nice. <laughs> and each step, did you just hear, katong, katong, katong. No, I'm strong enough. It's not to... the body, it's face. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry about your door. Uh, you're not the first one to break it. It's burnt. And broken. Okay, well, so you guys. Harm means family. <laughs> you guys headed back? Don't forget my band aid. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Here's a the healer oh. is. Just shaking his head at you and walking away. My lady. I lean into Pither and say, like, we can take him out. <laughs> I can hear you. As you guys. Yeah, I'm looking at you looking crazy. All right. Um, so you guys make quite a procession. Uh, who's mm-hmm. leading this procession? This, you know, march probably, of the Probably the guy with the body. Okay. So you're leading the procession. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. I mean, you somebody's guys... going to have to open the door for you, but sure. You guys notice that. Door. Irina, uh, Irina keeps pace with the body. Um, so you, are the other three of you behind then? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So you guys walk, um, you get up to the house, uh, and that woman is still wailing in the house next to the mercantile. You notice that Ir- it doesn't even phase her. She's just eyes locked on to the tavern that's across the road. What's with the lady? Loss is a part of Barovian life. What is the old, hey, while we're walking, just... What is the old, what does the pie lady do with the kids? Uh, slave labor, probably. Uh, okay. No one, no one knows. And she, continue walking. Okay. And, and you head to the tavern, mm-hmm. which the tavern you can easily tell is like <laughs> probably the largest building in town. Here are old lady pies. All our pies are made with a little bit of love, made from the hearts of dead children. Um. <laughs> and you see that. Um, <laughs> what? You see, a single shaft of light thrusts illumination into the main square, its brightness looking like a solid pillar in the fog. Above the gaping doorway, a sign hangs precariously askew, proclaiming this to be Blood on the Vine Tavern. Uh, for second checks. 18? 20? 12. Unnatural. Uh, 14. Um, everyone except for, uh, what's that? You all happen to look at it, and you're you, so you're looking at the sign as you're going along, and it says uh, uh, "blood on the vine." And then you're looking at it, and you realize that the sign has been defaced. It originally said "blood of the vine," and someone has scrawled an N over the top of the F. <laughs> and you see, you see Irina go up, and pull open the door to the tavern, and step in. I'll go with her. Yeah, so with it. Are you just standing outside with the? Yeah, I'll like set it down so I'm not just standing there holding it. I'm a weirdo. You're not gonna stand outside with it open. <laughs> <laughs> you're sitting there doing reps with it, man. No, like the boombox. Like, yeah, <laughs> say anything. <laughs> In your eyes. Put on a nice um, brown coat. And that's all we can afford. You notice that the inside of the tavern, even though it's a, it's a decent sized room, it's probably 60, 80 feet square in this main hallway, or you know, this main, you know, uh, drinking area, um, several round tables, a small fire, a little bar. You notice that there are only five people in the entire tavern. Um, off in the corner near the bar, you see three women in very vibrant clothing, um, multicolor patterned, um, uh, very loose hanging and fitting, draping, scarves, necklaces, you know, that kind of uh, style. Gypsies. Ah, uh, I was going to say gypsies. Three Sorry. women uh, sitting at a table off the side. You see sort of a short, pudgy man behind the bar cleaning glasses. And then you see one man, um, a fairly thin-looking man, but still, you know, straight shoulder, straight back, young man, long blonde hair, um, seems to be drinking a glass of wine. And as, uh, you know, as she steps in with you guys, uh, you see the guy drinking the wine sort of suddenly stand up. Irina, what are you doing here? She says, uh, they, they, she's like, Ismark, they've come. They're going to help bury Kolyan. Did she not call her father a father? She calls her by his name? Adopted. Oh, right. Sorry, I forgot. I thought, I thought. 
uh, 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 well, 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 thank you, gentlemen. Uh, it's, I, 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 I don't know how I could repay you. We, we, we've been looking for someone to assist us to get, to get the body to, to the church. Can I interrupt you for a minute? Is he adopted as well? We don't know. We, we, we've not Roll heard. family treat check. This is the uh, first we've heard of this guy. Yeah, that's true. We failed. I mean, do I they, meant to ask. Do they, they look were, alike? Yeah. Uh, you like, didn't look. The body was sealed. No, no, no. Oh. no do they? Does he look oh, like her? children? No, she's children. got long auburn hair and sort of um, olive darker skin, whereas he's very, very pale with long blonde hair. Okay, well, you would not so assume that they look. The color is auburn. auburn. Red. Okay. Reddish brown. Um. So who who walked in? It's a. I did. It's a mutation. He walks over to you. He's like, uh, allow me, allow me to it's introduce myself. Mutation. He's like. Um, my name is, my name is Ismar. And he goes to shake your hand. Ismar Kolyanovich. I'll shake his hand and say, I'm Davin Brassrox. Uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Brassrox. Um, I, I want to thank you. He notices several of you standing. I'm in, scoping in the, out the area to see if anybody's, like, just watching, like, creeping out. Well, there are four people. Are they creeping on us, or are they just sitting Oh, there? well, there's nothing else to watch, so they're absolutely watching you guys. <laughs> you notice that the, the women, um... The women sort of duck their heads together and kind of, and then kind of gaze up at you. I'll give them what? Perception to hear Probably. what they're whispering? Perception at disadvantage. We were all rolling something? Oh, wow. <laughs> really good and really bad. Six. Ah, no, <laughs> you, you can't tell. It's, it's very, very soft and they're 50 feet away. Um, Damn, you know, that's a big bar. Yeah, no, it's 50, 60 feet. It's a huge bar, which makes it all the more lonesome that there are only five people in it. Yeah. Um, so you see that, uh, you notice, Lucas, since you were looking, that uh, the barkeep is now wiping out the second glass. He's finished the first glass, put it back on, and now he's wiping out the second glass. Um, Spit shine? Yeah. Um, she's like, uh, uh, thank you, uh, would, uh, could I, and again, Ismark is looking past Irina and past uh, Davin to the other three who are either sort of, well, I assume the door's still open, so I assume he oh. might be able to see. So what he sees, because it's, you know, a door in a human town, he probably just sees, like, a shoulder down <laughs> <laughs> of, like, a big gray body and a loincloth or something. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for, for helping me get... And my, lady. And lady. <laughs> So I just defended your ass. For helping... Help she winks at you. That was close. <laughs> for helping me get my father uh, home, could could I buy you gentlemen a drink? Uh, I think we have more important things to attend to at the moment. Understand. We, we'll take a rain check on that. Yeah. Yes, I, I think that's fair. He turns to the to the squat man behind the bar and he says, Arik, um, be sure to pull a couple of bottles of wine. Uh... We will we will come back and drink after this this terrible business is done. And uh, he steps out. He says, uh, "Again, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ismark um, Ismark Polyanovich, and I want to thank you for helping me take my father to his final resting place." Um, Let's get her done. If if, if you don't, don't if That's you don't stupid. mind, I I would like to help. Yes. Again, are we are we not separate? Like, there's distance. Like, no, he's already he's he's crossed the threshold, and now he's oh. he's already headed outside. Okay, because they didn't want to drink, so he's coming outside, and that's I I would like to help carry my father. We need to go before it gets dark. Yes, that is that is advisable. Let's roll. He is your father. Yeah. So I assume that the three or four of you, Irina, wants to help, and so the. Uh, you all sort of take a corner and you all begin the march northward towards the church. So the sun is going down. Get it? It's getting closer to evening. The sun will be down in another hour ish or so. Oh my God, how fast can we dig a grave? And um, as you're approaching it, this is the most northwesterly um, structure in all of Barovia, and you notice that it seems to almost back up to the woods. And now very clearly, as you sort of get out of the houses, because the, the church sort of sits alone, it's a, it's a small, dilapidated structure with a very large surrounding cemetery, um, you notice that 
directly beyond the cemetery is just thick woods, <laughs> almost impenetrable to walk through. And then you see soaring above you a thousand feet in the air, this cliff face that just goes straight up. And you can see towers sitting way back in the distance at the very top of this peak. Um, but as you walk up atop a light rise, it stands a gray, sagging edifice of stone and wood. The church has obviously weathered the assaults of evil for centuries on end and is worn and weary. A bell tower rises towards the back, and flickering light shines through holes in the shingled roof. The rafters strain feebly against the load. So you guys approach the church, or do you walk around back to the cemetery? We just need to bury this guy. We don't really need to go in the church, right? Well, well should they... they kids. I was going to say, they had mentioned going to the church. Yeah, it's their daddy. Is she okay? Are you okay walking into a church? I asked the young lady. She just kind of looks at you strangely. I don't know things about vampires. Ignore him. Did you guys what about you, Tiefling? Can you walk into a church? Yeah. Um, <laughs> just tingles a bit. Tiefling catches on fire. It's the tip um, of my tail. As you approach the church doors, you notice that the heavy wooden doors are covered with claw marks and scarred by fire. <clears throat> nice. All the doors around here look like this? Again, just blank stares from the two of them. Do I look that funny? <laughs> yes. Tiefling. <laughs> No, actually, you look like the ones that normally do this to the doors. I have a, I have a biological question about tieflings. How big are their horns? It doesn't. It's the same. Yeah, um, I think they could be. Any how big size. are your horns? Mine just kind of drape back to about the back of my neck. They're not super long. Okay. And are they like goat's horns, where they're like just dead skin, so you don't really feel them? <laughs> I have just. No, I don't know. Play the game. I'm just asking, so I he's, can't play the game. He's asking so he can cut your horns off. No, that's, no. Not, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to cut his horns off. I'm going to carve them into dicks while he's asleep. Because <laughs> I won't feel that or wake up to the sound. So you guys stand at the doors. Uh, Ismark does, yes, There, we are frequently attacked, particularly any sort of bastions of, and as he nods to the coffin, bastions of law and order or... Special victims unit. <laughs> Criminal <laughs> tent. Travel jury. CSI. <laughs> if there's some sort of holy one that I could refer to, I'd really tickle himself with that joke. <laughs> like, Miami. <laughs> <laughs> any, any sort of bastions of, uh, you know, order or, uh, you know, religion are frowned upon by the devil himself. He sends his minions to. Assault the poor folk of Baroque. All right. Um, I understand when they say devil, they mean straw, right? Not the devil himself. They, you get the sense that as much as someone can be Satan, they believe that he is Satan. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like, he is the epitome. He is the Beelzebub. He is the worst of the worst. He is, it is devil with the ca most capital of these that you can get. Beelzebub is the devil put aside for me. For me? For me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doors. Scarred. Going in? I mean, uh, what, are they, what do they want? Do we need to go in or do we need to bury the body? It's getting dark. Let's see. Uh, well, uh... Well, comrades, we'll sleep in the church. I say we could... The dead father. We could allow the body to rest here if we do not think that there's enough time to bury it this evening. Can we estimate by some kind of rule how long it would take to dig a hole? And did anyone bring a fucking shovel? Uh, you know, the damn sure it's not I'd say you would likely have to ask uh, the, the village priest. I'm sure that there are shovels here. <laughs> Burials are not that uncommon. How can I answer the first question? Yes. Uh, how I long mean, would it take? To, to I don't know. Away? Hour, maybe? I mean, mm, how, we're an hour out from, an hour from, from dark. dark. Ish, yeah. yeah. I don't want to be guess, out you don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's a good idea that we don't be out here during the night, since you guys get attacked at night here. Maybe we can not, do this in the morning. Not, not since my father passed, surprisingly. And no one's attacked at all since your father passed. No. Do we want to leave the body here? We no, let's of... get it buried. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'm going inside. I'll we were check kind of see warned at shovels. one point to go to the cemetery at night and air quote, see what happens. And vampy McNumnuts can't get her if we sleep in a church At overnight. midnight. Right? It's not midnight yet. I thought you just said night. Huh? Strahd no. can't come get her if she's sleeping in a church overnight. So this would be a pretty safe place, hence all the religious iconography inside of her house. I'm going inside. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're going inside. Don't know. No, you guys can stay out here. I'm going to look for shovels. The doors, 
The doors open to reveal a 10-foot-wide, 20-foot-long hall leading to a brightly lit chapel. The hall is unlit and reeks of mildew. Four doors, two to each side of the hall, lead to adjacent chambers. You can see that the chapel is strewn with debris, and you hear a soft voice from within reciting a prayer. Suddenly, the prayer is blotted out by an inhuman scream that rises up from beneath the floor. Roll an issue. Ew. That's scary. I uh, will probably follow you in. Do I see the person praying? You do see, and the, so the church is like, um, is this five feet? Yeah. So it's about 50 feet to the altar, and you do see someone kneel before the altar. Just rocking back and forth. Does it look, look like, like a, a priest? priest? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he, appears, he appears to be in tattered vestments, as best you can tell. Okay. Tattered and soiled and ripped and... I don't... Okay, um, I don't know... You just called them preachers in this game. You called them father. Since it's not technically a Catholic, uh, a Christian, Catholic. Catholic, what are them Catholic, Catholic or Christian thing? You can call them whatever you want. I mean, do they are they called monks or something? Or what call them the fucking Ayatollah. Just call them something. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mahatma. I call him brother. And you can call him brother. brother yeah. <clears throat> yeah, brother. Um, Jesse Custer. Yeah, yeah, got a minute. You just see him continue to rock. Yeah, Does it react to me? Nope. I'll walk up to him. So you pass the four doors that are like the 20 foot hallway. So, uh, uh, Davin, as you enter, as I said, the chapel itself is about uh, 60 feet wide and 30 feet deep. It is a complete mess. Um, 50 or 60. You keep changing your story. And why are all the buildings in this place so huge? (laughs) With overturned and broken pews littering the dusty floor. Dozens of candles mounted in candlesticks and candelabras light every corner in a fervent attempt to rid the chapel of shadows. At the far end of the church sits a claw-scarred altar behind which kneels a priest in soiled vestments. Next to him hangs a long, thick rope that stretches up into the bell tower. When I hear soiled, I think poop. Yeah, I was wondering. Is he dirty or is he pooped? You are not there, I don't think, are you? I stepped inside. I'm just asking. Are you standing out there with the body or are you bringing it in? I'm wherever the kids are going. At this point, They're it seems adults, like the three of you are okay. still sort of... Ch- the children of the fa- of the deceased. You see him rocking. He's rocking in front of the altar. I'll walk up and put my hand on his shoulder. As you start to walk up, you hear another <laughs> scream echo from underneath you. And you hear the scream, Father, I'm starving! And oh just... Oh my god. <sighs> and you just see him... You see the man rocking. Um, hey, Padre. Does he react when I touch him? I... <gasps> who, who are you? What are you? What are you doing in my church? What? I just... Thanks, you worry. <laughs> I just have. I just have a very nonchalant sit. Does he react to the devil in his house? <laughs> he gives you a long look. And... I, I literally just grin widely and wiggle my fingers in a wave. Morning, Lord, preserve us. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. You Lord. will bring the dawn. You will bring the light. I'll you will pull the, the gauntlet way. off again and High show him the holy symbol. Uh, Is it on their palm? Yes. It's a road going into a sunrise too. So it's, it's like, like you see him rock. He's like, I just I've never. S- it's like, are you? Do you? That is not a symbol of the morning lord. Do you know the morning lord, Jerry? <laughs> The morning lord. It's like, he he has been silent. He no longer answers our prayers. He must answer our prayers. You've been trying we to want to be saved through the word of the morning lord. You've been contacting him at night because he really likes to contact you in the morning, apparently. That's it. What is it? Every day we must thank him that the sun will rise. <coughs> he's, again, he says, morning lord, preserve us. Your do I, shine do I us. know morn- Do I know the morning lord? Roll me a religion roll. Would I know, you know Can I do that as well as it's up there? Yeah. Uh, 20... Just above 20. Just I have 11. 2. Uh, you... Lucas, you're just assuming that it is some sort of, you know, beneficent deity. Uh, Brass Rocks, you don't know the Morning Lord per se, um, but looking around at the iconography, um, that what little of it has not been damaged, um... You get the sense that it is a, it's an old deity. Like maybe somebody worshipped this 
Morning Lord a thousand years ago or something. I was gonna say I thought that was a name for Lathander. No, I don't think so. Dol Ara, the Rising Sun, goddess of sunlight and honor, was a deity of Eberron. Does that sound right? No, no, it's it's some, I'm pretty sure it's something specific to this game. I don't think yeah. it's in the back. I don't think it's in there either. I could be wrong. <clears throat> Please continue. Because it's the the Morning Lord, at least in this book, is defined as not a deity of Faerun or oh. of any of those. I could be wrong. If it's in there, let me know. But so we clearly heard someone screaming, right? Every every few minutes, you, you hear that. <clears throat> Lathander, the Morning Lord. Oh, Boom. Lathander is the Morning Lord. Yes. Boom. Oh. Okay. So when he when he changes, everything. I have God of Birth and Renewal. It's yes, another yeah, name but part of the book. This actually <laughs> gives names for the gods. Oh, Nido. Yeah. I didn't think it was Lathander. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> when you uh, when you show him that, he reaches out and grabs your hand. It's like, have you brought him back to us? We need him in this time of trouble. It is only through his guiding light that we will be saved. You must bring the sun back. The morning lord must shine over all. He still Please. speaks to me. You, you, you can save him. How do I save him? Ask Who? the morning lord, how do I save Who? him? How do I save him? Who? And very thematically, you hear another scream from beneath the... <laughs> yeah. Father! Who is that? What's going on? It's, it's my son. Sounds hungry. God damn it, you are an asshole. <laughs> my he's, character is a dick. Get it right. He, he's, he, he went, he went with, he went with that wizard. A uh, wizard? Last, last year? I don't, I don't remember. Time doesn't make sense. I, the morning lord, how, it is eternal night. How, how can you measure time when the sun never rises? <clears throat> Can't get daylight spells. <laughs> it's he's, okay. Tell me what happened to him. I I don't know. He he came back and he was he was like like that. The, the monster turned him turned him into something else. I, I I don't know. The morning lord should tell me how to how to fix this, but he doesn't speak to me anymore. I turn to look at the girl. Does she react to me in any way? You you see that. Her, I mean, her shoulders are sort of tensing, and she definitely, you know, blanches a little bit of the story. Even Ismark, who seems to be a pretty stout guy, is visibly shaken about this. Father, we have come to come to bury uh, their father. Do you have any utensils to which we can? Uh, this, is this, <laughs> <laughs> this, huh? we, this is why I asked earlier. This is why I asked things earlier. What we, about what they call him? Call him whatever you want. Call him. Father, we have come to bury their. Uh, father. <laughs> That's so pither. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> it's like, you're burying, you're burying their priest? What? I'm their priest. Um, <laughs> Who's on first? I don't know, third base. It's gotta um, be your bowl. He, he, he sort of, he turns and looks at you, it's like, no, the burial, we must, we must bury him with the, with the morning light. It is, it is, it is the proper way. It is the way of the morning, Lord. He must be buried at dawn. He cannot, we should not bury him now. We sh- we should not. And again, okay. another another scream, uh, another scream peels out, and you see at this point he is literally kneeled down in supplication towards your yeah. outstretched hand. Like he's like, "Nice good morning, Lord, preserves. Morning, Lord, we hear one who's raised." Is there a like, is he standing on top of like a trap door or something that goes downstairs? Like no. Why don't you bring like, the the church, Does the church have it downstairs? There's a person there screaming like, from underneath. Yes. Nice. He said from could under the floorboards. Be, so Under the floorboards, it could be a crawl space. I'm asking if it's downstairs. Mm-hmm. I, when, I think of old, like, when I think of old churches and old cemetery, you know, they're always like up on blocks. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I was just wondering about. Like, is he hiding under there to stay in the shade because he has turned? Um, I'll ask the two kids, is it okay for us to wait until morning? Yes, I think. I think, given the given the circumstances, uh, we should you, we should probably be concerned about what is happening here. Yeah, my father was concerned about the matters of the living. He can rest above ground for another night. Okay. All right. So we. You want to sleep in the church or back at your place? I am sleeping in the church. Um. Actually, uh, you see me. Yeah. Uh, Ismark said he he looks and peers out one of the windows. He says. Uh, we will, my, he's like, 
uh, our home is is protected. We will. I will take her home. Even without a front door? I will take her home. Shit. This place is no longer safe, I think. And you see him begin to take her. He takes her out in front of the church. Suppose we'll just follow you. Can we stay with you? I, he, he, at this point, they're rushing. They're hurrying down the street. I'm following. I'm, I'm not. Here. You're going to stay in the You can probably stay in the church. It's just a your church. I'm staying to, to help the kid. It's the first church of Lathander. <laughs> the first new church of Lathander. You should Rodeo. probably go back to their house and repair their door. Um, they're the ones that left. I said I'm sorry. Pithers carrying okay. the body. So. Um, what are you guys doing? I'm staying. I'm staying with the holy man in this land of darkness. You're carrying a body, so you bring the body back to them and bring no, the body to the church. They said he could sleep in the way there. <clears throat> I mean, it's not exactly like the church has been clean recently. I decided I'm going to follow the Goliath this time. I'll do whatever you want to do. Not to put any pressure on Right, I don't feel that. like staying here is the right thing to do, but I don't think it works for the party. Either, I'm not so. sure any of us are going to sleep as I put my finger not, in my I'm, ear with that freaking I'm noise. I'm not looking to sleep. I'm going down there. Oh, you, fuck that noise. Yeah, Goodbye. He, he grabs He grabs your He grabs your hand. He's like, yeah, look at this, this, the morning lord, he speaks to you. Yes, you, you can help him. The morning lord... I, I I was not strong enough. The Morning Lord doesn't speak to me anymore. He will tell you how how to bring my son back. That is the only reason why he would he would send him back this way so I could have him back to bring my son back. Yes, I, bring I, my son back. I, hey, wait, 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 um, wait, wait. I put my very taloned fingers on the brother's shoulder and sort of move him away. I'm like, can I speak to you for a moment, dwarf? Sure. Away from this guy. That tone deeper. So we uh, step away. I'm like, look, this guy is clearly crazy. And he's saying that his son came back. Back from what? If his son is a vampire, I'm we're not gonna, doing this. We're, I can't walk away from this. You can't walk away from a vampire? I can't walk away from... I can't walk away from another priest of my own faith in this kind of need. Oh, I get that. But you're willing to sacrifice yourself against something that is probably going to eat you alive? That's... It is four against four. That's kind of what I do. Three against one. Huh? Three against one. Can I roll a persuasion Four. to get him to oh. leave? No. <laughs> roll a persuasion to what? And get me to leave. Make the dwarf While change his mind. While you two are talking to the side, I have a question for the breeze. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, you, you at can... this point, he's taken, he's taken one of the icons off the wall, and he's like literally completely bent over his head on top of it, and is just sort of rocking back and forth. You, you said your son came back. Had you buried him? He said, hey, no. <coughs> no. Uh, Lord. No, Doru, Doru, Doru. He came. He came back, but he never, he never really came back. It wasn't him. It is him. It's it's him, but it's not him. We mu- we must cast out the evil that the devil put inside of him. That he so he didn't he didn't die, per se. No, he's 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 alive. We can save him. He's fine. He's he just does. he just needs to. He just well, he's he just comes in, he comes back, and we're in a big room with a dead body. He's also very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should make sure those nails are nice and tight. He's, he's hungry for something. Hey, what? Well, he went on a trip. He missed that part of the story. Oh, no, I didn't miss that. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sound out. Mm. Huh. He must. He must. He must. He must. We. We. we yes. The morning Lord preserves. Morning Lord, bring bring the sun. Bring bring the rays of your benevolent hope and, and, and cleanse. Cleanse this. And, and he just, he continues to sort of go back to praying and muttering. Where yeah. is he? At this point, he's near the altar. No, I'm asking him. Where oh. is he? It's like you, will, you, you, you will save him, right? You will, you, you will bring my son back to me. Sure as hell gonna try. <laughs> and if not, we'll send him back to the morning. Uh, Poor choice of do words. Do you need to roll some sort of deception on that, or do you intend to? No, I it? honestly do intend to try. Okay. All right. I did not know if you honestly think you have a skill set to heal. I guess you do. You are a cleric healer, so I guess you, that's fair. Um, roll me. Can you a, heal vampirism? That'd be awesome. I don't know that he's a vampire. Roll me persuasion. Uh, pers- yeah. No, I've got more than just healing that I can do with uh, advantage. This garlic. Crit. Anything? Nice. Eight points to the room. She's like that room. He. I. I. I had to. I wasn't strong enough. I had to. I had to. 
Oh my god, I locked my son down there. He's so hungry, I locked him down there. What's he wanting? He, he's it's not he's un, he's not clean. <laughs> he's not he needs uh, I'm not strong enough. You you will save him. The door. There, there. You will see you will see the trap door. It will take you to him. Yeah. You you will save him. You will save him. Uh before we The start morning him. lord will yeah, no, I'm huh? The morning lord the morning lord will guide you. You will save my son. I grab him by the collar. Sit. <laughs> oh, he's He's sitting. He's sitting and holding any sort of sun iconography he can. Are there, like, windows? Yes, there are windows. It doesn't doesn't help with the sun side. Okay. No. If we're going to be here, I'm assuming that something is coming in the night. We should... Oh, no. What's coming is in the basement. No. I can feel it coming. <laughs> in the air tonight. Hold on. Calling is the word, actually. Huh? I feel like we should, like, fortify the, you know, ballot and then get in. Um, Let's use the casket. You, no. there are about the fifteen smashed pews. Um, you could use that to sort of lock up the windows. Uh, you could attempt to bar the door if that's what you wanted to do. It it would be possible. That's it would so be bad. makeshift. It wouldn't last more than a few blows, but it would be better than just glass. Right. So that's what you want. I mean, to I'm, I'm, I'm mainly fo- I mean, yeah, we mainly focus on the door, but. Yeah, no, it. that's fine. You can easily reinforce the door. That's not a problem. Are there, like, big windows that you could, like, jump through? If yes. You okay. Yeah. Okay, anybody want to help me with this? Nope. Help me with what? I'm going down there. Again? Yeah, okay. Again, I think we should first make sure this You want to do this first? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we're reinforcing the windows, <laughs> and we're barricading the door somehow? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, you're really like cues we could use, and they're smashed and all over the place. There are bits, but yes, you could put a chunk of pew here. You could put most of a pew there. Okay. Um, and there are four rooms that you guys haven't looked in yet, as well. Right. We we can add plus three to the building's AC with our with our repairs. Yes. Find some sharpened pieces of wood. Absolutely, it's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll start looking in the other rooms while you guys are doing whatever you're doing. Um. Uh, so there are four rooms. Curious. Four rooms, two to the west and two to the east. What room would you like to go into? I'll go to the first room on the west. Again, R- which room did he point out to me? Uh, he pointed to the room. Uh, he pointed to one of the rooms to the east. Okay. I'm, I'm avoiding that room. Okay. So. Real quick, the, uh, again, because I don't know exactly how D and D vampires work. Do we need wooden stakes? Is that a thing? We or? fought one before. Remember, it was not easy. I know. In another game, right. but yeah, Still. in Strahdland. Um, like, can I roll a history or something? Like, or, yeah, or somebody can I stabby like, stabby and they'll still die? Can you you can roll a history, a nature, an arcana, a religion? I'll try to give you some information. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Sixteen. No, on any these kids. Huh? Sixteen on any of those? Well, you get to pick one. Which one do you want? History again. Um, history. historically speaking, you do know that they are fearsome foes, vampires. You do know that. They drink blood, they tend to be very hard to kill, sometimes weapons don't do as much damage to them as they should, you do know that it is a, it is a rough fight, to say the least. Nature. But do I know anything about wood stakes? Um, that's probably not good enough to let you know, I mean, it, you, is, I mean, would there be lore about? Yeah, there is lore, and there is lore about that, but it's not, it's not necessarily clear on a 16, I mean, it's, it's like, You've watched the movies about vampires, but is that really what you need to know? Like, maybe you should have opened a book kind of thing. There's Barkley. I read that in a book. 16 on religion. But... Yeah, same sort of thing. Yeah. 21 on nature. Um, You know that they have certain vulnerabilities. You know that magic probably is the quickest and surest way to take them down. Okay. Um, it, There's a lot of hokey religion. You do know that some things affect them. Holy symbols can affect them, um, <coughs> given certain situations. So I don't know. Sharpening the end of my quarter staff wouldn't. Not necessarily a bad thing. Then technically it's just a spear. <laughs> yeah, but a spear made of wood. I mean, I was are you, are you, are you proficient in spear? <laughs> nope. Simple weapon, might be. I'm proficient with a quarter staff. Uh, so, sure, Lucas, you were going, staff with a pointy hand, I guess. You were going to the first room to the west? Yes, sir. Um, you see a dirty, lightless room that contains a wooden bed and a straw filled mattress. Mounted above the bed's headboard is a wooden holy symbol. Um, does it look like the same holy symbol as Lathander? I mean, everything you're seeing is some sort of sun iconography. That's Very tight. Nice. Nothing nothing quite exactly like Jeff has. Roll me a history. Which movie? Uh, 
19 plus something. Uh, it's, it's weird. So you just had a couple of glances at his. And you would imagine this icon iconography is very, very, is very, very similar, but also distinct. Um, it looks less... I assume that it's just distinct to the area? Um, on a 19, you're, you're thinking that it's more than that. It's, it's definitely distinct. It's definitely distinct to the area, but it's more like, what do I say? It's like looking at the difference between a Celtic cross and your traditional, uh, you know, new uh, a Baptist cross or what? You know what I mean? Like they're similar, but not only are they different, they had a similar root. But at some point, these split very, very drastically. If that makes sense. That's all that's in this room. Yes. Move on to the next room on the rest on the west. Mm, you open the door and you see. A dirty room that contains a wooden bed with a straw mattress, next to which a small table and oil lamp burning brightly upon it. Mounted above that bed's headboard is a wooden sun-shaped pulley symbol. Same thing. Is the other room? Yes. Okay. Um, the room on the east that does not was not pointed out earlier. Okay. An old desk and chair stand against the wall, a wooden holy symbol mounted above them, a sunburst. A ten-foot-long iron rod attached to the north wall stands bare, suggesting a tapestry may have once hung there. Against the far wall stands a wooden cabinet <coughs> with four tall doors. Um, are there drawers on the desk? Yes. I will open them. Um, you find some sheets of blank parchment, <coughs> along with some quill pens and some dried up jars of ink. Okay. I uh, will look at the... It was a wardrobe, you said? Yeah, like a big wardrobe. All right. Done it. You open it up, and it's almost completely empty. It's very, very bare on the inside. Um, you notice a tinder box and a full... A few wooden boxes full of candles and two well-used books. What kind of books are they? Um, the first one is called Hymns to the Dawn, mm -hmm. and the second one is called The Blade of Truth, The Uses the uses of Logic in the War Against Diabolist Heresies as Fought by the Olmist Inquisition. Yeah, I'm going to grab those two books. And Nobody expects the Olmist Inquisition. I'm going to grab those two books and bring them to the cleric and see if he knows anything about them and if they might help him, whatever the hell he's trying to do. Okay. Do I know anything about them? Uh, I will take religion or history from anyone examining me. And Jeff, you get advantage on religion. And history. 13. 20, 20 on history. On that. Um, you don't recognize these. This is, The almost Inquisition doesn't make any sense to you at all. Okay. Um... It's a book of hymns, but it's not in none of the hymns that you know. The mm -hmm. almost Inquisition doesn't make any sense to you either. You get sort of the same sense between the two of you. You kind of put your heads together, and you get the idea that the, <clears throat> the book of hems I can't remember to cast guidance. <laughs> reminds you of the exact same it's thing um, with the holy symbol. That it's, it's a divergent thing. Jeff recognizes the concept of the hymns, but they're very, very, very different. From modern Lathander worship. Would your psychotic priest be able to help you? It, as far as either of you can tell, they're not magical. They're just books. Right, but I'd okay. like to know what the Olmist Olmist Inquisition? Olmist. U-L-M-I-S-T. Olmist. As you flip through it, you realize <laughs> that it seems to mix logic exercises with lurid descriptions of fiend-worshipping cults. Like, if the art of war and the Necronomicon were together, that's kind of what this book is. Okay. That's why I, I get the feeling like it's almost like a satanic Bible. I in, wouldn't call it a quite way. a satanic Bible, but it's kind of, it's full of like riddles and thought puzzles and logic. Do they look like spells? Arcana? Is there a difference between like holy symbols, like an actual holy symbol that 13. would help against a vampire, or like just this like random iconography that we're seeing? Um, like these, sun, these, these things that are in these rooms, like would these be useful, or were they are they just sun things? Um, or is this more of a like you have to the, have faith in the bridge festival? Thing. Yeah, I mean, you sort of need to make a holy symbol really work. You sort of need the power of the god behind it. Thirteen on Arcana. Um, if it's magic, you're not noticing it easily. So, as a cleric, can he make things holy? But I can the, make. I get the idea. That I can make a, a symbol yeah. that I believe in. I can't necessarily make one that you believe in. You gotta have a little bit of infusing from the god itself. He can't just hand you a cross and you're okay. okay. 
That's, that's what I'm trying yeah. to get at. Yeah, I point out why. It reminds reading. me of Salem's Lot when the priest has the cross and the vampire just knocks it out of his hand because he's like, you don't believe in this? Yeah. Like, same sort of thing. You need to have some li- literal divine oomph behind it. I sort of point out my gumption that it could be spells to the other two spellcasters and see if they would know anything about them. Seriously. So, one what? What I'm reading, I get the idea that it could possibly be a spell of some kind. I have a plus one in Arcana. Well, mine was plus three, so... Yeah, high five. Yep. You can roll an extra d4 for Arcana. I'm showing it to both of you. 17 on Arcana. You don't think it's magical. That's it, not magical, you're an idiot. <laughs> I don't just <discuss. laughs> I'm just curious. It just seems... They're songs. When's the last time you heard a magic user sing? Cthulhu, go. <laughs> okay. I'm talking to the Tiefling. How's the Tiefling know about Cthulhu? I know it. Cthulhu is a thing in D&D. Not anymore, it's not since they got sued. Oh. <laughs> Although if you ever find that deities and demigods from, I think it was AD&D, that's actually worth a decent chunk of change. Is it? First edition has Cthulhu in it, and then somebody raised a stink about it, and then they had to reprint it. How yeah. can you sue... Nobody owns it. It's in 1985, yeah, somebody it's did. Been... Oh, but well, they don't own it anymore, so they could be. The of HP Lovecraft? Yeah. Well, but I don't know what the role-playing licensing is now. <laughs> Some games have it. I don't know who sued them, actually. I just remember that story. I thought it was the estate of each Lovecraft. It might have been. That makes the most sense. Anyway. All right, we got this place shored up a little bit? Yes, you would think that before something could have crashed through the window easily, now it's going to be a bit of a... At least it's going to take them to crash through the window, then they'll hit something, then they'll be in the room. Okay. So what are you guys? You so guys going downstairs? Yeah, I am. Okay. It's up to you guys whether you want to go with them. I'll go with you. Okay. Um, I sit down next to the brother and just kind of lounge, put my arm around him, just hang out there. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry, I was being my character. He he pays you no mind at all. He just continues praying. Okay. I also uh, am holding my hand on a blade, just in case, just the handle of the blade. Well, it's a good thing. It's you can draw it. Roll, the, roll a dex to not cut your fingers, and you said you're holding onto a blade. The handle of the blade. Why would you anybody just grab say the that. blade? Yeah. Um, it's not like I put it in the holster. Because you're a shitty rogue. Our title track, Nocturne, provided by Sleep for the Weary off their new album, Nocturnes. To find out more about Sleep for the Weary, check them out on iTunes, SoundCloud, Facebook, and at sleepfortheweary.com. Join in the brothel conversation on Facebook. Questions, comments, and suggestions can be sent to between two crits at gmail.com. Like what you heard? Subscribe, share with your friends, and leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Most of all, keep circulating the tapes. <laughs> <laughs>